next time you are meeting, flood and make sure you are the one to receive. Know that your guest will be the one receiving you. One of the things that this program also has done for me is I now know the meaning of a word I did not fully grasp before. I know that the dwarfs are not only in Congo, that it's also in technology. And so you have uh, nano as well. We all have many opportunities every day. And if we are open, we will learn a lot of things, you know, even in unlikely places. So I want to welcome our guest uh, speaker, uh, Professor Walopo Zikon, a prophet already here. And uh, the way he's sitting down, I know he's already he's ready to unload what he has come here with. So please let him open. Tomorrow, you will be the one to be the guest speaker. Tomorrow, you will be the one to be the guest speaker. I'm not celebrating like that. You are not sure because you will be celebrated in Jesus' name. You sit on our privilege. Also, welcome to our guests who are sitting down here. It is my distinct pleasure and privilege to uh, declare this open. You look at uh, inside that kind of a computer or some electronic gadget. What, when you look at them, when their size is so big, what happens is that you have a lot of transistor inside, a lot of capacitor inside, a lot of resistor inside, a lot of all these uh, components inside. But with the advent of one single thing that I call integrated good. I see. This IC, what is embedded to produce only one component of this IC? It's over 200 transistors, capacitor, resistor, and packing together. That we have taken a lot of spaces, but with only one IC, it will take just one space. It has reduced the space of most of the electronic gadgets we have today. Those days, we used to have a standing television. How many of you have seen that before? Tiny television. Uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> so this is television, you open it, open and close. You know, very big. And there uh, don't no color television those days. What we do is that uh, you use a complex liner that has color. We put it together, cello tape it, and then uh, this two bonnet. Is it two Look. Yes, you remember, look at it. So we take the glucose nylon, then we now put it on it to give us color. But either way, the, the color is going to give to me is mono color, only one color. But we enjoy it. But thank God for STEM and for new innovations, we have improved a lot. So the knowledge of the electronic side. The 1990s made modern electronics possible and it has been the foundation of modern nanotechnology. It is not by giving it the those days, they don't really have anything that pass it to them. Next. Who invented nanotechnology? It's an American physicist that won no Laurel Prize called Richard Feynman. He introduced the concept of that technology in December 29, 1959. It happened during an annual meeting of American Physical Society. He presented a lecture entitled, There is plenty of room at the bottom. So what it means is that uh, there are lots you can do that uh, no look at the up, that down, that is reduced from millimeter to micro, then to nano. Nano is 10 raised to power minus 9. Are we together? And then very soon we are going to have a pico. What is pico? 10 raised to power minus 12. So very soon we are going to have a pico. 
Because in the, outside the country that has advanced, they have started working gradually. It's here we are talking of Nando. They've forgotten Nando over there. They've forgotten Nando over there. They are working towards people. Thank you, Superman, to do it. And that's how it will continue so that we can benefit. Smile like that. And we should now bring about a quick recovery of the animal. And also the animal will be fatter and uh, to be able to get it warm. We make use of number about three full signs. Why one might first think of a genetically modified organism when it comes to food and technology? Now, the technology can be used to enhance texture and flavor during food production and food processing. When a nanomaterial is introduced, it can preserve the food for a longer time instead of a uh, insect invading the products that we have. So, with this, you can process and can also preserve your uh, agricultural food product. So, and to better preserve and protect food from micro, microbes via food packaging that uses uh, technology. Further, engineered nanomaterials can be used to control water and pesticide used on agricultural crops, which will not give you nutrients of crop potential. Unlike most of the insecticides that we make use of, it has a greater adverse effect. And uh, that is why we have a lot of uh, cancer patients, now kidney patients, and all the likes. Because of the, uh, the insecticide the, that they use on the, on the, in order to protect the crops. So it's got an effect. But with the help of this kind of technology, then all these things can be removed. We have to watch some of this area so that uh, we can now sit down and look at which area do we go, okay? So that uh, we can tailor our search into it. Then also in medical and healthcare applications. Uh, now the medicine, that's what we call now medicine. As a result of the medicine, when they apply nanotechnology to it, it's now called nanomedicine. It's the application of nanotechnology in medicine. We draw on the natural state of biological phenomena to produce precise solution for disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. So the moment you want to diagnose and put the device of the nano gear, it will straight and it will say everything just like that. And there's some of the operation they do now that you don't need to stay seven days after the operation. And after now, after you after do the operation, after now, you are okay. You are good to go. So this as a result of this uh, nano technology that we are seeing. Nitrogen dope carbon nanotubes. I mentioned nanotubes the other time. It's also part of nanotechnology. Be used for the treatment of cancer, drug delivery, gene therapy, treating wound injuries, and imaging tools and uh, equipment. This is a symbol of uh, carbon gold nanotubes to treat uh, cancer. Uh, well, the, the next part is coming to talk on this. The professor Iwan Lopumoso, so he's going to say a lot on that. Uh, medicine, technology, for the aid. Solar panel. This is very, very important. Because the type of solar panel that we have nowadays, the way they receive sunlight is so slow, very slow, that if care is not taken, it will damage your batteries. Because you don't know by the time you make use of it the way you are using it, they automatically have, have an effect on the battery. This area can be worked on very well so that we can solve the problem. I know during the rainy season, the way the solar panel receives energy will be so slow compared with the dry season that we are now because most of the time we have the sunlight. But uh, during the rainy season, it will be cloudy. So, just little energy will be drawn and will be retained. But with the use of a nano solar, 
in, the, in that solar panel, then because it is smaller, very, very small, minute, it will be able to attract the, 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 what's it called, the energy and uh, it will be able to store it. The same way the batteries will be able to store, also they are not made of uh, nano. And uh, if nano can be introduced to the battery or solar battery that we use, then this battery can retain little electricity that is stored in it, can store it, and by the time we, be, we need it, we can make use of it. Time. Next. So, number one, we are looking at future innovations and uses of nanotechnology. That is a future transportation. Nanotechnology offers the promise of developing multifunctional materials that will contribute to building and maintaining lighter, safer, smarter, and more efficient vehicles, aircraft, spacecraft, and ships. So that should be our major focus now. Something that is durable and more efficient. In addition, the technology offers various means to improve the transportation infrastructure, advances in nanoscience. Now, as we are talking, we have started seeing that they are stored more energy that they are now using for electrical cars. It's as a result of invention of nanotechnology, which we can take it off. We can take it off so that we put batteries that of nanomaterials, and in this country, we can use it to power car without making use of fuel. And work. So we have seen some of them that are coming on gradually. Then, number two, in electronic sensors. You can use it in sensor, and this is very, very important. And that's why what we are really lacking in this country for surveillance, for tracking down the us for doing a lot of things. So, and these sensors, they are very tiny. You will not know that they are there. Most of the new car they are bringing in, other than the older one, like all this, uh, Cool, uh, that they call uh, muscle and the lights, they have sensors. I got detected of it, was it two weeks ago? When I said, car doesn't do it before. Once, second time, third time, before it starts. But only once. They come, I call the electricians, they look at the, uh, what's it called, it? the kick. They say, they will change the brush, do this, do that. They change the entire we change it the same thing. There's a cold start. Cold start. Okay? The body cold start. We put the cold start there the same way. Nothing happened. And I said that, uh, but nowadays we have some uh, equipment that diagnose cars. Let me take it there. Let me diagnose it. You cannot believe. By the time they it to where the problem is. Sensor on top of the engine. They didn't replace it or just remove it, uh, work on the service it, clean it, and whatever. He put it there. Once, he started. Till today. Look at the roundabout I've gone through. So that's why sensors is very, very important that we need to look into. So with the current advancement in nanotech, sensors with very minute features can be printed on the flexible rules of passing. They can be manufactured in large quantities at a very low cost. These sensors can be used to continuously monitor the end of a critical infrastructure. It to monitor bridge. When bridges begin to vibrate, to know the strength, the tensile of it, and to know where the problem is coming from. If the sensor is brought to the place, it will sense it. And will be able to say that this is where we have a problem with the bridge. And then from there, they can now fix it up. Because bridge is part of collapse. 
The same thing with building. And what brought about collapse of bridges, brought about collapse of building, or collapse of road or road failure, is as a result of the host materials. That is the soil, the rock that is underneath the surface of the earth. So if all these things is not looked into properly, you will not know the level, if it is road failure, of the debt you need to excavate before you bring in uh, maybe granite and uh, what have you that will fortress the place. The moment there's a clay in a place, clay during the rainy season is swell up when, when it's taking in water. During the dry season, it streams. Year in, year out, whether it is a building, you build it on top of a clay, the same way it will come. Year in, year out, stream, fat, stream, fat, stream, fat, it will tilt the building. You begin to see cracks both inside and outside. You begin to see the pain of the tiles. So that means the foundation has a problem. So all this thing I may make use of. So you can use that also in to monitor aircraft, the sensors. So that when there is going to be a problem, they quickly know and they can divert the plane so somewhere else. Or they can give a signal that will make it to do the necessary thing. In military applications, that is another future place we can make use of uh, nanotechnology, military applications. Most of our military men have been wasted, and they are still wasting them. We pray that they shall stop, and God will help them. But everything is not prayer. We believe in prayers, but there is something science has to come in to work out and do. Because by the time they tell them, say, hey, red alarms. There's a Kenabite also, please, please come over. There should be something to tell them and exchange those places, maybe about uh, 10 to 20 kilometers. Like the way you use CCTV here, they should be able to see. Are there any people, any person in the bush that are hiding somewhere before they jump out? By that jump out, they don't cry for five minutes, they will come out of the bush. Why they are very to spray them? And that's how we must stay. So in military and nanotechnology, military intelligence, smart sensor technology that I just mentioned now, smart sensor technology in which nanosensors are integrated with neutral networks. How to look at signals. Sense can be used to detect harmful chemicals. You can use it in biology and agriculture and biological weapons, damages to military equipment, nature, and the magnitude of potential risk when the explosive is detected. Nano sized drones that can be used in surveillance. Remote detonations and communication, and they can communicate to name a few. These drones can have long battery lives with nanosensors that allow facial and object detection. We need to introduce it into the military. I have a sketch of nanomaterials in military applications. You can use explosive and propellant in nanorobots. Sensors and transducer in the MEMS and MEMS intelligent apparel system to give them intelligence about what is going on, smart materials and the lines. There are many applications that cannot be limited to the laws of motion that humans use in their daily lives. In the field of transportation and movement, such as walking, cars, trains, and planes. Mm. Go to the next slide. Yes, number four, security. Security. We have been complaining about security, no security here, no security here. For future, now technology can play a greater to solve this problem. 
Nigeria's security team, NST, estimates that uh, between January 1st and June 30th, end of year 2021, about 2,144 Nigeria, they have been reported kidnapped. This already more than the entire figure reported for 2020, which is 2,860. So you can see that the increase. For 23, for, for year 2022-23, you know how much people was happening. And then added to the estimated 18.34 million dollar in ransom payments. This worrying statistic does not show any signs of slowing down. It's continuing. Hence, the need for holistic approaches to nipping this anomaly in the ball. Nanotechnology are excellent services in the use of uh, biometrics in these premeditated kidnappings. Through the analysis, thorough analysis of samples from crime scene. Not that alone, through this approach, culprits can be tracked down using the faintest but highly reliable forensic. Some universities have started uh, all these forensic uh, courses. In my university, we just had a, a NUC that came for the resource and we have the approval of it. So, the president can equally ask for it. But those are the new areas that people are going into so as to solve the problem of this uh, security. And the forensic uh, course, it called across both the biological, the chemical, all, everybody will lecture them. <laughs> people uh, biological sciences, from the chemical sciences, from the physical sciences, so everybody will be involved in the lecture in medicine, testing of the blood, and the, the fingertips and the lines. A fair graph. This is also important. It's another promising application of nanoscience in the utilization of graphene and other supermaterial missing passive nanostructure. What is graphene? It's a nanomaterial. That is the level they are over there now. Other than just normal nanomaterial, nanoparticles, they step up to graphene. It's a part, it's a particular nanomaterial that comprises a solid free sheet of carbon of the thickness of one atom. It is extraordinarily hard.